Hey there guys, it's me, Debbie on the Magenta. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Today we are taking a break from Pinocchio, which we will resume next week to bring you the fairy tree of Doros Wood, or Doros Wood. It's kind of a, I wasn't able to find an official pronunciation. So this is an Irish fairy tale that is very old and it's been recorded in a lot of different ways, but this is the oldest version that I could get my hands on. Okay, so once upon a time, when fairies still occasionally mingled with the human world, they used to come and throw parties in the woods of the world. And one of the ones in which they liked to throw their parties was called the Doros Wood. Now, one of the favorite party treats that fairies used to like were these magical fairy berries. And they were delicious and sweet, and they looked like ordinary red berries to the human eye, but the fairies knew what they were, and they were delicious beyond all repair. But the fairies were not allowed to allow humans to have any of these berries. So if you were partying in the mortal planes, and you dropped one, you had to make sure that you picked it up. You couldn't leave any behind, because otherwise they might grow into a tree, and that would be catastrophic. For you see, if a human were to eat one of these magic fairy berries, they would live forever. An old woman would become young, an ugly person would become beautiful. The fairies couldn't let the humans get their hands on this, so it would just be too dangerous. So there were very strict rules regarding these berries. You could not accidentally leave one behind. You had to make sure they were all accounted for at the end of every party. So one such party was being thrown in the Doros wood, and there was all sorts of fairies partying there, dancing around the campfire. And one of them was a harp player who played a beautiful harp. And everybody loved his music. They loved to dance to it. It was beautiful. And at times it was fun or sad as the case may be, depending on whatever song he was telling, you know? And this little guy, he got a little tipsy and he dropped a berry and he didn't notice that he had left it behind until everybody had gone home and the party was over. And he said to himself, Ooh, I could get in really big trouble. I'm just not going to tell anybody and hope that it gets eaten by a bird or something because I would get in massive trouble if anybody found out. So he doesn't say anything about the berry that he dropped in the Doros wood. Now it came time for the queen of the fairies to have a wedding. And so she sent all of her pages, her little servants, into the Doros wood to capture some butterflies that lived there and bring them back for her so that she could have them released at her ceremony. And while these pages were there in the wood, what did they stumble upon but a fairy berry tree. And so they reported back to the queen and she was enraged because that means that somebody broke the rules and dropped a berry there carelessly. So she sent for all of her subjects to be brought before her throne so that she could, you know, ask them all questions and determine who left the berry there. And everybody showed up except for a little harp player because he was terrified that she would find out the truth. But of course, him being the only one to not show up is actually what gave it away that it was him all along. So the fairy queen had him brought before her and she demanded like, yo, how dare you be so careless? Do you know what the repercussions of this could be? You know, what if humans found that tree? What's wrong with you? And the little guy goes, I'm so sorry, please don't punish me. And all of the other fairies cry out, no, please don't punish him. He's the most beautiful harpist in all the world. And the fairy queen thinks for a minute. She says, all right, how about this? Because you are indeed the most beautiful harpist in the world, and it would be such a pity to lose you, we are going to temporarily exile you to the land of giants until you can find a big, scary, horrible giant, big and scary enough to guard the tree in Doros and make sure that no humans ever eat it. So our little fairy, he packs up a bag full of rations and food and his little harp. And he sets out on a grim journey until he comes to the land of giants. 
when he's there at the land of giants, he's terrified. The giants are giant. They don't seem to see him. He's only this tall, and some of them are as tall as houses. They stomp their great big feet, and they shout, and they roar at each other, and get into fights. And the little fairy is just trying not to get stepped on. He's terrified. So he does what he does best. He finds himself a safe little spot to sit down. He takes out his harp and begins to play a soft, soothing, calming song because he's he's so afraid of the only thing he can think that would calm him down right now is music. And soon enough, he feels calm inside. The, the beauty of his own music is working on him. When he opens his eyes, he has a little jolt because sitting right there in front of him, very patiently, is a giant. And the giant says, well, who are you? And what are you doing here in Fairyland? You play so beautifully. And our little harp player, he explains his plight. And the giant says, good luck. Why would anybody ever want to leave giant land? Hey, you don't have any food, do you? And the little fairy is terrified that the giant is going to eat him. So he offers up all the food he has, which happens to be mostly some more of those fairy berries. And the giant takes a big pinch of berries and goes, Hum! and puts them into his mouth. And... These are really good. Do you have any more? And the little fairy says, no, I'm sorry. I give you everything I had. That's all that fits in my little bag. And the giant goes, well, you must take me to where I can get more immediately. And the fairy goes, I know where you can get more. There's a tree in the human worlds in the forest of Doros. And I just so happen to be looking for a giant to guard this tree. And the giant goes, that's perfect. Then I can eat the berries forever. So this little fairy takes his new giant friend to the fairy tree in Doros. And the giant sits down there and sets to work guarding it. He's living it up, eating all the berries he could ever want guarding this tree. And our little fairy friend returns home to the fairy court and says, I've done it. I've found a giant to guard the fairy tree of Doros. And the fairy queen is delighted and claps her hands and says, your exile is over. You could play beautiful music for us all you see fit. And our little fairy friend, when I tell you he was the most beautiful player in all of Fairyland, he sat at the right hand of the queen and played for her music every day, except he oftentimes went back to Doros to visit his giant friend and play music for him too. And they all lived happily ever after. Thanks for watching, you guys. Be sure to like and subscribe and comment and all that jazz. And tune in next week for the rest of Pinocchio. Or, well, I don't know if I'll be finishing it, but, you know, for more of Pinocchio. And happy St. Patrick's Day. Bye-bye.